Hi, I'm Ed Trout from Prophetic Life Ministry. I'm glad you joined us today on YouTube. Please like us and subscribe and also mark the little bell with the little notification so we can let you know that we are putting up new material. Today we are talking and getting it straight. We're talking about prophecy and things that affect the, that prophecy coming to pass. People often ask me, Ed, so I get a prophetic word. Uh, is this something I can do to make it happen or not happen? I'm just too glad to tell you and answer that question. First Timothy 1.18 and be sure if you're watching that everything I teach and everything I believe comes straight from the Word of God. I do not have opinions, only Scripture. It's very important to me to believe the Word and do what the Bible says. Now, uh, 1 Timothy 1.18 says, My son Timothy, I charge you in accordance with the prophecies that by them you wage the good warfare of faith. And so, if you understand today that when you get a prophetic word, you have a responsibility to do warfare and to respond or react. Okay, so let's get to practical things. Prophecy, we are not led by prophecy. We are led by the Spirit. That's how we are called the sons of God. We don't determine our lives on prophecy or make very important decisions ever on prophecy. We only use prophecy as one of the tools that the Holy Ghost will use in your life. But it's not the only tool. Only one of the tools has a great place. It's there to encourage and strengthen and help confirm things. But you don't base your life off prophecy. Now, prophecy is an invitation to God's purpose and plan. It's obvious that any Christian who knows or walks with the Lord knows that, that we don't always walk completely in the will of God. We have our own will. and We do things we wish we hadn't done sometimes and had made a better decision. So I'm here to ask you and to tell you today that if you can just... Make a purpose in your heart to start learning to obey God even if you don't and when you don't understand. That's what drew God to David, King David the first way was his obedience, Acts 13, 22. You do whatever God asked him to do. So it's about your attitude. Now, when you get a prophetic word and nothing happens like that, well, there's so many things that influence that word. First of all, do you believe it? That's the con first condition. Are you going to accept it, believe it? It's conditional to whether you receive it or believe it or not. You'll find that the Israelites had a promise of milk and honey and 600,000 Jews left a grueling journey from Egypt and they never got to the milk and honey land. Just two of them. Two of 600,000 entered in. Why? Because they were unbelieving and disobedient. So there are conditions, and there are more conditions that I could name to you today. But when a prophetic word doesn't happen, rather than always trying to stone the prophet or look to fault to the prophet, there are many conditions in us individually when we're invited to God's purpose and plan. We don't follow all the promises of God or all the commands of God. We don't love our brother. We don't, many Christians don't tithe. Many people have difficulty obeying the Lord in their relationships. All kinds of things like that that we struggle with. So imagine if you have struggled with written, clear, established word. How then when the prophetic word comes are you going to follow after it and obey the Lord and pray it into existence and, and walk the best you can by faith? No, it's, a, it's an invitation to God's purpose and plan. And there are conditions that have to be met. And then, oh, God's timing is so different to ours. What seems to be a complete bust, sometimes a prophetic word didn't happen today, then 20 years later it suddenly comes to pass. God has no time frame that holds him down. God is not concerned about our little time calendars. So please understand the timing of God. Look at, look at poor old Abraham. He gets a promise he's going to have a child. And he, he thought it was crazy when he got the prophetic word. But it took 24 years after the initial word. 24 years. Who waits 24 years for prophecy and 99 years old? 99 years old having that child, having the second time promise. And got to circumcise himself. He's got to change his name at 99. That was a, such a strange situation. He thought he'd fulfilled already with Ishmael. Which brings me to, often because it doesn't happen the way we want, we will initiate, orchestrate, or bring about certain things the way we want them end up with a disaster. Don't do it. Don't do it. Wait for God's timing and God's purpose. So before you stone the prophet or criticize the prophecy, let the Lord speak to you and pursue him and call upon him. You have to pray it into being. Often you have to do warfare with that promise of God. 
God gave them the land of milk and honey. Like they didn't just walk in and, and those Philistines saying, oh, if God told you it's yours and who are we to stand anyway, go ahead and just take all that we have. No, they fought every single battle until they finally possessed it. And that's with God's promise. So please be assured today that when God gives you a prophetic word, there's a role you've got to play in our lives. And uh, you can't say this prophet prophesied false or incorrectly to me or wrongly. If you are doing things that are sinful, disobeying God, there are many things that contribute to these things. So be encouraged today. And even if you did make a mistake, it's not too late. You can pray into being because God's word doesn't return to him void. His promises are yes and amen. So if you messed up, made a mistake, get your life back on track and pray those things back into being and God will fulfill those prophecies. I'm so glad to share this, this thought, these few thoughts with you and I hope that you follow us and, and tell your friends about us and like us and also go and check our, our website and our app. We have an app on, on, uh, on Apple. You can download it for any kind of phone that you have, smartphone, and get our daily devotionals, which I write every single day and to help strengthen my brethren. We're so glad you joined us today. My name is Ed Trout. Prophetic Life, drop us a line, put a, make a comment in the, below. Give us, let us hear what's going on in your life. We'd love to be a blessing to you. See you soon.